HDR is something, well, I use it quite a lot actually in my landscape photos. Uh, it stands for high dynamic range and uh, I, I feel like people are often confusing it with an effect. We all heard that, you know, I don't want to get the, that HDR look and I, I agree, that's, 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 not, uh, uh, that's not a good look. But it's not a look, it's just a way to expand the limitations of your camera's dynamic range. So if you're shooting in a high contrasty area where there's a lot of difference between the darkest shadows and the light, brightest highlights, you will need some tools to deal with that. So first I'm going to use a little time to explain what dynamic range or high dynamic range is. I'm not going to get overly technical and I'm going to use some of the terms freely to be able to explain it better. Make it as simple as I can. Then after that I'm going to go on location to show you a, a photo I shot in HDR on, uh, on Vestrahorn mountain and then we're going to edit that photo. Before we continue, subscribe, like my videos if you like them, share them, thank you. Okay, to understand HDR or high dynamic range, we kind of first need to understand what dynamic range is. You know, we hear it all the time, camera manufacturers are constantly trying to improve the dynamic range on the camera, but I find it very common that people just well, don't fully understand what's it all about. Only, you know, it, that it's good to have uh, a lot of it. So let's say this histogram represents the dynamic range of any given camera. Left of the histogram are the shadows and then on the right side are the highlights. If the curve of the histogram does not touch the left side, it means you are not clipping the shadows. So the shadows are not completely black and can be edited without getting noisy or grainy or have some weird colorations in it. And then if the curve is not touching the right side of the histogram, you are not blowing out the highlights. Meaning the bright areas in the image are not completely white and therefore can be edited. If it's blown out or just completely white, you will just see a white patch on your photo and if you try to darken it, it will, you know, it will not get darkened, it will just get grey and ugly. Dynamic range is different between cameras and it's measured in stops. So what's a stop? I'm assuming uh, that you know what the three pillars of photography are. Aperture, speed and ISO. The increments between an aperture on a camera is, are called stops. You know, typical range of a lens is from well f 2.8 to f 32 but that really depends on your lens so for example an aperture of f 2.8 is one stop down from f 4 the increments between speed on a camera are also called stops shutter speeds of a camera are for example 1 60th of a second it can be a whole second, two seconds, and it has a it has a huge range, and also it depends on your camera. So, for example, 60 is three stops down from 500, and finally the increments between ISO are also called stops. ISO being light sensitivity. For example, ISO 200 is one stop up from ISO 100. Some cameras have more dynamic range than others, but they all have limitations. We need to be able to push through. Very often you will have, you know, the sky blown out a little bit, uh, and that can easily be fixed with a gradient filter. But sometimes this is just not enough, and then it's time for the big guns. And in this case, the big guns are HDR, or high dynamic range. So, here I have uh, a picture I took at the Seljalandsfors, which is probably the most photographed waterfall in the world. 
It's a waterfall on the south coast of Iceland. You can go behind. There's a cave behind it and you can go behind it and uh, shoot through the water. And the nicest way to get this is when the sun is directly in front of you. So you get like a, get like a sunburst and, uh, and you will uh, illuminate the water. But then you're shooting against the sun and you're inside a cave. So uh, this is what I got with a correct exposure, if there is something that uh, we could call a correct exposure in this instance. Uh, sun is blown out, sun will be blown out, I mean uh, somewhat at least. I could get it uh, to be uh, like more yellowish, but that's not really what I want. All I want is to, do, to be able to see everything which is in the cave and uh, outside also so and there is there is no camera that can deal with this so uh, i'm using the hdr mode exposure stacking so three shots i took three shots this is the normal exposure let's call it just the uh, the midtones so then i would shoot three stop under exposed and uh, three stop overexposed to get all the um, details here in the in the cave two guys walking here and uh, and it's looking good so when i combine those three images together i get this uh, it's a little flat little soft has a you know a little bit of the hdr look which is maybe not desirable, but after a little edit, I got this. So this is my end image. This is what I'm happy with. This is how I remember standing in there with the yellow evening light uh, shining in, in the uh, cave. Without an HDR or without uh, exposure stacking, this is not possible. Okay, I also mentioned that, you know, you shouldn't look at HDR or high dynamic range as an effect. It's not an effect. It's just the way to get all the dynamic range within one photo. But sometimes I, I completely understand what people are talking about when they say an effect. Because, for example, here is a perfectly good image an hdr image and here is a similar image with this you know it's this it's just completely disgusting you know and this has nothing to do with hdr this is just me completely ruining the image with bad edit so make sure you know the difference so i'm here at vestrahot mountain there is a reason why I do a lot of videos here. Um, I have clients with me and it's a huge area. And uh, once I got my clients, you know, started, you know, they're starting shooting. I have a little time to, uh, to do this. So that's why. And also, why not make my videos here? But I have this spot I'm gonna shoot. It's uh, like a, a few small rocks in the, with a little puddle and um, and the mountain in the uh, background. It's 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 very dark at the bottom uh, where the rocks are and uh, the the sky is blowing out. So I'm actually clipping. My camera is not able to do this uh, shot. It's clipping both shadows and highlights. So I need to do something about it. And the easiest and the most effective way to, to do this is using, folk, uh, is using exposure stacking or HDR. So first of all, we uh, of course compose this. And uh, I'm not gonna focus stack this, so I'm not too close. As you can see, the uh, the histogram does not, uh, it's clipping both uh, shadows and highlights. So uh, we need to do something about that. We could, we could do a gradient filter, 
you know, to darken the sky a little bit. That, but that would also darken the mountain, and I don't necessarily want that. So, and it's very dark here at the uh, at this at this bottom. It's shadows and uh, dark shadows. So I I want to make sure I have all the information there. You know, if I if I if I try to push the shadows when they're too dark. It's gonna be noisy. It's gonna look. It's gonna look bad. It's not gonna be sharp. So I want to do uh, uh, an exposure stack for this. And uh, the easiest way is just to select HDR on your camera. And uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna find about what what's right here. And I'm gonna turn the. Uh, polarizer a little bit to get I, 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 I want a little reflection in the uh, the pond so uh, I don't want to take it completely away something like that now I have just to put on I can of course uh, do it manually you know just by adjusting the speed but I'll just go here in the HDR mode and uh, enable it I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have three stops between. So it's a three, it's three pictures with three stops between. Uh, two might be enough, but I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna focus on this rock over here. And then I'm just gonna shoot it. So now I have, well, this is a JPEG uh, which uh, it makes automatically just for preview. Uh, I never use it, but here's the overexposed, here's the underexposed, and here's the, uh, well, normal, uh, correctly exposed, if you will. But, but uh, it's still, I'm gonna do it one more time because I, I, the composition is a little off. So uh, let's try to make a keeper out of this. Something like that, this is better. Center the mountain a little bit. Make sure it's leveled. There we go. Okay. Focus again. Check. It's it's on. Set. And shoot. It shoots all three images. I don't have to press the shutter each time. And also it makes the uh, the extra JPEG, which is nice for preview, but you don't really need that. JPEG, overexposed, underexposed, correctly exposed. And there we go. Now let's take this to edit. Okay, here I have the three frames I took at uh, Mount Vestrahot. And I can see here uh, in the uh, left edge of the uh, of the frame, there is a client of mine who is kind of sneaking inside the frame, and uh, he wasn't really uh, welcome. But you know, because he's a client, I'm not going to eliminate him. So I'm just gonna uh, select those three images, right click. Photo Merge and HDR. So this works very well uh, if you do not have a lot of moving objects or moving uh, things in your frame. For example, if you see my uh, photographer client here, there is kind of a weird two version. He's a, he's, he's a ghost. There's a ghost of him here. That explains the um, these uh, settings here, the ghost amount. Now it's set to none. We have low, medium and high. I'm going to say this is pretty high. He's walking, he's a big guy walking in my frame. So I'm just going to check that. There we go. The uh, ghost of my photographer is gone and only he is left. So it worked perfectly. Also, I want to check auto align because these are three images and it's very well possible that the tripod moved somewhat between those three images. So I'm always keeping that checked. 
uh, to use auto settings is optional. It will make automatic setting to the pictures so all the histogram will, will be within bounds. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna leave that checked and check merge. And here I have my uh, final version, the, the merge uh, HDR file. You can see here on the histogram, it's all within bounds. Here you can see it's squeezed, it's overexposed, so it's squeezed up against the wall here. Here is touching both sides on the uh, first frame. And here it's squeezing the shadows. So this is what we wanted. A nice histogram within bounds. So here, well, then I do just uh, just add it. It's a little, uh, it's a little crooked. I'm gonna fix that. A uh, little, little overexposed for me. So what I do like is to uh, have contrast in the image and. Uh, the white balance was all wrong, so I'm just basically tweaking this a little bit just to fit my uh, editing, but you get what I mean, it's not about, uh, this tutorial is, is not about uh, how to edit this picture from beginning to end, just how to make this from the others. Now I see all the details here in the shadow. If it's too dark, like it's a little bit dark here, I will just open the shadow a bit more, or use my brush and do it more uh, locally. You know, you don't have to make uh, all the changes global like I was doing there. So here we go. In, re in real life, I would do a little more to this image but uh, that's out of the scope of this tutorial. If you look up here in the corner, there's a link to a video I made uh, about how I would edit this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please comment if you have something to add. This is not an, like an extensive explanation of everything, but you know, it's kind of scratching the surface so you will be able to use it and uh, know when to use it. Thank you, goodbye.